In this lesson, we're going to go a little bit further into the binomial theorem. So I hope that you've watched my introduction on the binomial theorem as well as the previous lesson. Um, otherwise, this lesson is not going to make that much sense. So let me show you what we're going to do. So what we're going to do, it's quite easy. We're going to go and um, we're going to start off by using the binomial theorem on this, but we're not going to do it for all of them. Um, I'll show you what we mean. So you see there's a three here. So if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that we'll have to first use the Pascal triangle and we'll have to go down to row four. Okay, please make sure you've watched my previous, uh, my introduction to the binomial theorem videos. Okay, and then these would be threes. And so... Um, Remember that if we if you watch my lessons, you'll know that we have power, and this is usually row this is power zero, power one, power two, and power three. So that's the one that we want. So these are the numbers that we want from the Pascal triangle. So we're gonna say one plus three plus three plus one. Then what we always do is we go take the m and then the negative n and we just go put that to every single term in brackets. And then what we do is we take this number over here and we put that to the first one. So that's going to be 3 and then 2 and then 1 and then 0. And then we're going to take the other number. So it's 0 and then 1 and then 2 and then 3. Now they want to know what is the third term. Okay, so that's this one, this one, and wait, so you can't say this one, this one. That's term 1, that's term 2, this is term 3. Okay, so we need to neaten that up. So that's going to be um, 3m. And then negative n to the power of 2 is going to be a positive n squared. Why positive? Well, if you have negative n multiplied with another negative n, the two negatives make a positive. And so this is the answer. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson. We're just going to be finding a specific term. So here we have, they want us to find the fourth term. Okay, so we know that if this is a 6, then we have to go down to row 7 on the Pascal triangle. And so here we're going to say power 0, power 1, power 2, power 3, power 4, power 5. Um, oh, we need to go more. Oh, no, we're good. Power 4, power 6. Okay. Um, right. Now we just go fill everything in. So that's 2. Uh, 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 2 is 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. Uh, 5, 10, 10, 5, and then 6, 15, 20, 15 and 6. Okay, so these are the numbers that we are going to be looking for. Whoopsie, up to here. Now, maybe if you understand the binomial theorem quite well, uh, we can save ourselves a lot of time. They want the fourth term. So we're going to go, this is term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4. Okay, so it's the 20 that we're looking for. So this is the one we're looking for. And then we know that we would have had to go and put... Um, two brackets, and that those two brackets would have been the 2x and the negative 1. You know how we would have done that for all of them. But it's not necessary if they only want the fourth term. Then what we would have done is, so th for this one you would have had a 2x and a negative 1, and you would have done a 2x and a negative 1, and so on and so on. And then what you would have done is you would have taken this number 6, and you would have put that at the 2x, and then you would have counted down. So 5, then this one would have been um, a 4, and then this one would have been a 3. And then for the other part, you would have counted up. So 0, 1, this part here would have had a little 2, and then this part here would be a 3. Okay, so there we have it. So now, and if that part, what I just did, confused you, then what you may want to do is just go expand this whole thing the way we normally do. Then you'll see what I mean. Okay, so what we have at the moment is this. Okay, so now... We need to say that 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So it's going to be 20 multiplied by 8x to the power of 3. And then negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1. So we can do that. Then if you had to multiply 20 with 8 with negative 1, that would be negative 160. And then the x3 would be left over. And so that is the answer. Negative 160x3. Two more examples. All right, so here they want the third term in the expansion with a power of 4. So if they want a power of 4, then you have to go down to row 5 in Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle always goes one row extra than the power. Okay, so there we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, that's good. Now we go fill that in. 1 plus 1 is 2, 3, 3, 4, 6, 4. Okay, so these are the numbers that we are looking for. So we're going to say 1, 
plus 4 plus 6 plus 4 plus 1. Now we're going for third term, so that's going to be term term 1, term 2, term 3. Okay, so we're looking at, we're only going to look at this one, okay? Now we know that for each of these, if we had to go do the whole procedure, we would have put a 2 over here and a negative u, so a 2 and a negative u. Um, so let's do it for this one. Okay, so that's the one we're looking for. Then we would have taken this number 4 and put it with that, so that would have been 4, 3, two, and then you would have counted down, but we don't need to go any further. And then for this negative u part, you would have started at zero, one, and two. Okay, so this is what we have at the moment. So we've got six, and then two to the power of two, and then negative u to the power of two. And so that's gonna give us six times four, which is 24, and then negative u to the power of, or negative u multiplied with another negative u is actually gonna, actually gonna become a positive uh, u to the power of 2. Okay, and there we go. There we have one more example. So here they want the third term. Now this one here is a third power, so we need to go four rows down for Pascal's triangle because Pascal's triangle always goes one extra than this number over here. So if this number is a 3, then we go to row 4. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2, and there we go. So these are the numbers that we are looking for. So 1 plus 3, plus three, plus one. Now we're only looking for third terms. That's term one, that's term two, that's term three. So that's gonna be this one over here. Now we know that we would have put five X and then negative two Y, and we would have done that for all of them. But let's not waste time and do that because we're only looking for term three. Then the next step, we would have taken this three and put it with the five X, so it would have been three. Then this one would have been a two, and then this one would be a one. And then what we, let's just put two brackets here. And then what we would have done is we would have put a zero over here, then a one, and then a two. So there we have it. Now we can just go take that and quickly rewrite it over here. Okay, so now this part here just remains five X because it's just to the power of one. And then this part here is gonna become two to the power of two, which is four. So it's gonna be three, times 5x, and then times by 4y to the power of 2. And so now if you have to multiply 3 times 5, which is 15, multiplied by 4, which is 60, and then x, y to the power of 2 as our final answer.